So, like six years ago now, it's been quite a while, the Mythbusters episode Thermite vs. Ice aired on TV. And uh, in that episode, they played this clip. We could hang these up in a gallery and we'll make it like a million dollars. So, Jamie's special thermite blend is hot to try. Now, ever since seeing that, I have wanted to make my very own piece of thermite art, and I've finally done it. This is one of them. Of course, you make a whole bunch of them at the same time. If you have seen that episode, it's just a stack of plates that the thermite melts through uh, consecutively. And I think these are really awesome, because every single one of them is has a different splatter. There's a little bit of randomness to it. And uh, the trick is that you have a whole bunch of sheets. This is actually 26-gauge uh, steel. Um, that's what I used. I think that in the Mythbusters episode it might have been a little thicker. But uh, you have thermite on top, and it drips through consecutive plates, and each plate it splatters, and then it melts through the plate and splatters onto the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So you actually make a whole bunch of these at the same time. And it's a really cool process, and it leads to a really cool piece of art. So the thermite reaction is a really unbelievably powerful thing, just because it releases a freakish amount of heat. And the reason for this is that the products of the thermite reaction are really, really stable. Now, every compound has uh, a formation energy, which is basically the energy that is required to hold all of the atoms in that compound relative to one another where they need to be. So if you look at the atomic scale, everything's bonded to everything, all of those bonds have energies. Basically, how much energy does it take to hold it where it is? And uh, if the atoms don't like being in that configuration, there's a lot of energy that's required to hold them where they are. We say it's an unstable compound because it would like to fly apart and the atoms would like to form something completely different that is more stable, um, that requires less energy to hold them in that configuration. Now, if you go from something where there's a lot of energy being stored to something where there's a little bit of energy being stored, all of that extra energy needs to be released. And in a thermite reaction, that energy is just released as a hilarious amount of heat <laughs> that will actually melt the products of the reaction before they're even done reacting. So you end up with dripping molten iron everywhere. So releasing an enormous amount of energy at once sounds like an explosion, but thermite is actually not an explosion because of a couple real points. Technically, an explosion has to have the reaction front moving through the material faster than the speed of sound. So in the case of thermite, this is clearly not the case because it's just like a pile of metal dust and it's slowly being consumed by this. I mean quickly, but not speed of sound quickly. So that's strike one. Strike two is that thermite reactions by definition release no gaseous products. So if you burn something like octane in your car's gas tank, um, it's a product of that reaction is hot water vapor. So it's actually an expanding gas, and that's how your engine works. It expands and it pushes on a piston. If you put thermite in your uh, car, it wouldn't do anything other than make the engine hot because it doesn't actually expand. It takes an oxygen from that's bonded to one metal, and it moves it, and it bonds it to a different metal. So when you start, you have a metal oxide and a metal, and when you're done, you have a metal oxide and a metal. Uh, there's no gas created, there's no expansion, so there's no shock wave or like blast front that is indicative of an explosion. Thermite is a mix of finely powdered aluminum and a metal oxide. I used iron 3 oxide, which is often sold as like red iron oxide or something like that. Now, during the reaction, the oxygen leaves the iron and bonds to the aluminum. And it's a very simple change, but there's a huge energetic difference between 
the uh, the reactants and products here. And that difference in energy is all of the heat that's released by the thermite. The trick to thermite is that although it's incredibly energetic and basically impossible to stop the reaction once it's going because it's not only strongly exothermic but it's self-oxidizing. You can light thermite under water. It's really difficult to ignite thermite. You need temperatures of 22, or 2200 degrees Celsius to just light the stuff. That's really hot. For reference, a glass furnace operates at a relatively brisk 1000 degrees Celsius. You could literally shovel thermite into a glass furnace and it wouldn't even think about igniting. It wouldn't come close. In fact, everything that burns needs some temperature to ignite and then it burns slightly hotter than that or else the reaction wouldn't proceed. So in order to light thermite, we actually need to continually step up the temperature until we reach the thermite ignition point. So the first thing is real easy. It's a regular butane lighter. And then using the butane lighter, you light a map gas torch, which burns slightly hotter. And then the map gas torch burns hot enough that it can light a strip of magnesium metal. So yes, in order to light thermite, you need to actually be burning metal before you light the thermite, which is burning metal. And uh, the magnesium is hot enough. That hits the 2200 degrees Celsius, and that will light the thermite. But once the thermite is lit, you need to watch out because it's a whole lot of heat in one place, and it can be pretty destructive. Evidence. We will Here's have Brian. Tapes of evidence. No, don't get me. Okay. Did anybody have sunglasses on? I can't see anything. Oh my gosh. There's one pound and three sheets of steel. One pound and three sheets of steel. It just set off the magnesium fuse. You should not look directly at this. It is really bright. <laughs> what have we done? Oh my god. Ah, it went all the way through. It's in the bucket. Yeah, your Shoot, bucket's we done. Built a hole in the bucket. Yeah, your bucket's gone. Oh my god, that's awesome. Okay, we should probably go like a tide now. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear the bucket draining. What? Hey, you have Mark. I do! I'm so happy! <laughs>